Sin is not just, you know, what you do. It's actually who you are. We are all born into sin. And the fact that we are born into sin, that means we cannot overcome sin. We actually need somebody else to help us overcome sin. And his name is Jesus. The more you keep it a secret, the harder it is for you to, to break it. This is why you need an accountability partner to speak out and to talk about what you're actually dealing with. Sin is any act, word, or deed that is outside of God's original design. It's a criminal act activity against God's plan. Those of us who live contrary to God's law, God's character, God's word, we are sinning. What sin is really is choosing yourself over God. You can write that down. Before I get into the tips on avoiding sin, I just feel like it's it's important for us to, you know, define it. You can't really know what it is to overcome sin if you don't define what sin is, right? Sin is in our behavior, it's in our mind, it's in our attitude, and it's a heart posture that always falls short of God's glory. We all fall short, guys. The Bible tells us that all of us fall short of the glory of God. We've read that in the book of Romans. But you may ask, where did sin come from? Well, first and foremost, we must not think that sin comes from God, because sin did not come from God. God is perfect. He is holy. Therefore, sin did not come from him. Sin came from Lucifer. In Ezekiel chapter 28, it tells us that sin came first from Lucifer. Sin came into Lucifer, who was an angel and a cherub, and God did not create sin. It came into the heart of Lucifer. And this was because he convinced himself that he wanted to be like God. He wanted to do what is right in his own eyes. I would encourage you guys to go and look look at ezekiel on your own but i hope you guys are clear on you know what is sin where it came from sin is not just you know what you do it's actually who you are we are all born into sin and the fact that we are born into sin that means we cannot overcome sin we actually need somebody else to help us overcome sin and his name is jesus jesus helps us overcome sin period jesus helps us overcome sin how does he do it by sending his holy spirit into our lives to empower us to sanctify us, and to guide us to live in the life that we ought to live in Christ. If you're trying to overcome, overcome sin with your own ability, you're going to fail. I repeat, if you are trying to overcome sin with your own ability, you are going to fail. Period. You need the Holy Spirit. You need God to help you overcome sin. So sin came from not only Lucifer, but it existed. It, it existed before Adam and Eve, yes, but it came through Adam and Eve. Sin came through Adam, and it also came into the world through Adam. Romans chapter 5, verse 11 tells us that sin came into this world through Adam. So Adam's nat sinful nature, that, that tainted sinful nature, is the same sinful nature that we inherited. We all was conceived into sin. We all inherited the sinful nature that Adam had. We, have, we inherited Adam's DNA. In the beginning, God told them not to eat of the fruit of the tree of life. Y'all remember that, right? But they disobeyed, and they ate, and they sinned against God. And, and the problem is, is that they did something that was contrary to what God designed. Contrary to what God wanted. Contrary, contrary. And that's what sin is. Anything that does not line up to what God desires. Anything that is contrary to what God originally designed. Now that we got that covered, let's talk about the five tips on overcoming sin. Remember when Jesus was teaching on prayer? One of the things he says was, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from the evil one. Prayer helps you to overcome temptation and to avoid sin. So if you're having a hard time overcoming sin, maybe it's because you haven't been in prayer. I would encourage you to spend quality time in prayer if you're going to overcome sin. Number two, the second tip is studying God's Word. If you want to overcome sin, you got to be in the Word of God. If we will study the Word of God and put those things into our hearts and lives, then we will live a life that is pleasing to God, and it will help us to stay away from the grip of sin. Studying the Word of God helps us to know God's heart, God's character, God's will concerning our life. Because the Bible tells us that your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Remember when David wrote that in the book of Psalms? 
the word has to not only be read, but it has to be applied to our lives. And could it be that the reason why you are having a hard time avoiding sin is because you don't spend enough time in the word of God? Yeah, 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 yeah. Many of us are thinking that we could do it on our own, with our own might and our own power. No, we need God's word to take root in our hearts so that we could avoid sin. So spend time studying and reading the word of God. Not only reading it, but applying it to your life. Third tip that you could use to avoid sin is by surrounding yourself with the right people. Like you need to be around environments and the right people that will not lead you to sin. Y'all remember that verse that tells us bad company corrupts good character? Many of us have a hard time avoiding sin and it's because we are in the wrong environments. We are in environments that lead us to temptation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember when I used to be in an environment of drugs and gangs, I would be doing sinful things like smoking weed. And I'll be thinking about things that does not align with God's heart. In the moment I removed myself from certain people in certain environments, that's when I began to ooh, grow closer in my relationship with God, grow in my intimacy with my Heavenly Father, learn what it means to please God, learn what it means to avoid sin. Many of you could avoid the sin that you're struggling with if only you would change environments change your circle. You know, you got people peer pressuring you to smoke, people peer pressuring you to get drunk, go to the club, sell drugs. You know what it is that you need to do to separate yourself from these type of people. Maybe if you separate yourself from these people, you could actually avoid sinning. Tip number four. I hope I'm helping you guys. Is this helpful? Tip number four. One of the ways that you could overcome or avoid sin it's by even establishing accountability with someone. Yeah, you can find a friend who can hold you accountable to a certain thing that you struggle with. Maybe you have a hard time not wanting to watch porn, right? Like many, I know a lot of people who struggle with watching porn. And, and I'm just using this example. It'll be great for someone who struggles with porn to have an accountability partner. For that person to say, hey man, you, you tell your friend, hey so-and-so, I'm having a hard time, you know, with this addiction. I watch it at this time of the night. Can you hold me accountable? I don't want to watch this anymore. This is what I'm dealing with. You know, you need that person in your ear that could hold you accountable. Someone you could report to. Someone you could be honest with. Someone that you could trust. Many of us should surround ourselves with people and mature Christians that can help with accountability that can help with you avoiding temptation and avoiding sin. The more you keep it a secret, the harder it is for you to, to break it. This is why you need an accountability partner to speak out and to talk about what you're actually dealing with. And that accountability partner will help you get through the very sin that you're struggling with. So talk about it with somebody you trust. The last thing I want to give you guys, and it's going to be very important. The last tip is you need to repent of your sin. If you're going to avoid sin, you need to repent of your sin. Repentance is literally turning from your sin to turn to God. God knows that we all make mistakes. But if we're not honest about the things that we've done, if we're not honest about us breaking God's law and going to him in honesty and saying, Lord, I've sinned against you. Help me to overcome this sin. If we're not honest and asking God for forgiveness when we sin, then how could you overcome the sin that you're dealing with? One thing that we do know is that God promised that he will wipe away our sin. But we must repent. We must confess. 1 John chapter 1 tells us if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It takes you acknowledging, Lord, I've sinned against you. It takes you saying, Lord, I need you. Can you change my heart concerning a thing? And don't be in a place where you are feeling condemned when you're doing that because there is no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. You know why we have no condemnation when we come to God confessing our sin? It's because we believe in what Jesus did. And you know what Jesus did? Jesus took the punishment that we deserve. He took our place of punishment so that we could become the righteousness of God. This is the good news. Jesus 
was sent to live, die, and be raised in our place of punishment of our sins, so that by grace through faith in him, we might be saved. That's one part, right? That's that's the gospel. That's the good news. Jesus accomplished our salvation so that we could, we could be brought back into a rightful relationship with God. That's beautiful. We have no condemnation because of what Jesus did. But now you need to live a life where you are submitted to his lordship and submitted to what God has called you to do. You got to repent and you got to believe. You got to repent and you got to follow him. If you find this helpful in any way, like I want to tell you guys, prayerfully consider becoming a Patreon. If my ministry have blessed have blessed you in any way, my my YouTube, my Facebook have blessed you in any way, prayerfully consider becoming a Patreon right now at this moment. There's a link in the description, a link in the bio, a link that's even hovering on the screen where you could become a Patreon today and support as low as $5 a month. There's no donation too small and no donation too large for you to become a Patreon and support. Your support is helping me to continue to reach people who are far from Jesus. It's helping me to focus on this full time, helping me to continue to push out content so that people can grow in their faith. So if the Lord is leading you in any way, prayerfully consider becoming a Patreon. God bless you guys. I, I am grateful for you guys connecting and supporting.